If your computer is running like a potato, there's actually a few things you can do very easily which can restore speed to your computer or even enhance your existing performance. So let's dive into it. Nico knows tech, all your tech tips and reviews on deck. Nico knows tech, number one channel with the news on check. So in this video, I'm gonna cover six things that I do on pretty much every computer to enhance the overall user experience, whether it be speed, responsiveness, even privacy. Now, this is not gonna cover malware and security related issues. If you suspect that you might have a virus, check out this video up here. Now, before we get started, check out our sponsor. Do all of your friends call you a loser for using a sus copy of Windows? Then stop being a zero and get ready to be a hero by getting a valid copy of Windows 10. With all the bells and whistles a future superstar like you needs, you might be thinking to yourself, Eh, Pro Edition costs $200, see? No. If you follow the link in the description to VIPCDKDeals.com, you can get yourself a Windows 10 Professional Edition for $22.50. Wow! You think that's great? Well, if you use coupon code NK25, you get 30% off. That brings the price of Windows 10 Professional to $15. Wow! All major payment methods accepted, including PayPal, Visa, and MasterCard. Once you have your license key, open Settings, then System, About, then Change Product Key. Simply copy and paste your new key and then click Next, and then you are Gucci, my friend. Now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to clear the startup. This isn't necessarily new, and you've probably seen a lot of YouTubers talk about this, but this is something we do have to cover. We're going to right-click on the taskbar and then click Task Manager. Then on the startup tab, this is everything that's running automatically at Windows boot up. This greatly impacts um, the weight that's on the system. And 90% of the things in the startup don't need to run in order for these applications to function. So for example, Steam does not need to run in the background at all times in order for you to um, use Steam. It'll automatically open when you open up Steam. So anything here that is not necessary, for example, if it's not de device related, for example, if it is not Intel or um, Realtek, it's not related to a device, then it doesn't necessarily need to run at the startup. And if it's related to a security software or something you want running on the system, then you can leave it alone. But for example, here you can right click on Steam and right now it's in it, it's disabled, but if I want to disable it, I right click on it and click disable. So anything here that is not something I want to have running, for example, all of these applications here, my antivirus software, um, my NordPass, my NordVPN software, uh, my DAX, these are stuff that I do want running, but that's because I'm using them at all times. So you can just go in here and disable a ton of things. My system would be significantly slower if iTunes was running in the background, Spotify, Epic Games, um, Apple Push, Adobe, all of this stuff doesn't need to be running in the background in order for these applications to function. So go ahead and do that. Then once you close out, it'll, it'll most likely prompt you to restart. And at your next reboot, it will not be running those applications in the background and that greatly impacts system performance. And next, we're going to optimize our power options. Now, normally, if you were going to impact your power options, you would click in the search, click power, and then over here to choose a power plan. But we're actually not going to mess with this. This is a little bit old school, and we're going to do it a more pro way. We're going to use an app called Quick CPU, which you can get the link in the description. It's 100% free. I've actually made an entire video on Quick CPU and a lot of the details, so you can check out that video up here. But for this video, we're just going to show you how to create a high performance plan which is more superior than the ultimate or the high performance ones that default with your computer because we're going to make sure that none of your cores are parked meaning all of your CPU cores are active they're not going to sleep and you're trying to automatically wake them up with whatever you're doing so we're gonna have the core parking frequency set to 100% frequency scaling at 100% so this is going to make sure that your um, your base frequency is being met. So if you have a four gigahertz processor, it's not running at 2.8 all the time because of some wonky power option that came with your computer. So we're gonna have it set there at the maximum amount of time. Turbo boost at 100% means that as long as your computer is adequately cooled, it's gonna try to go above your core for your base frequency to go to the the maximum potential frequency. So my processor, for example, has a maximum speed of 4.8 gigahertz. With turbo boost to the maximum, it's gonna try to reach that as much as possible when I need to. Now, if you don't wanna go through all these settings, you can just go up here to the top and click maximum performance. 
and it's going to create the quick CPU scheme. So it's going to remember all of these things so that when next time you boot up your computer, as long as your power setting is set on quick CPU, then you're always going to have the maximum power out of Windows for your settings. This doesn't affect um, overclocking. It doesn't do any of that. This is just Windows power and this is how you would set it for the true maximum performance. Now the next performance tweak is totally optional, but it is something that I do recommend for system performance. It does come with a trade-off. It's called indexing. Now indexing itemizes everything that's on your drives, whether they're SSDs, hard drives, anything, to try to make the search feature right here a little bit faster. So if I'm trying to search for a document, it's going to try and find the result a little bit quicker. Not a whole lot. It may take maybe 45 seconds longer if you disable indexing, but I do recommend disabling indexing. I don't think it's a very good feature of Windows. Now you just right click on the drives and you could do this on all your drives but I'm just going to do it on this one for example right here. I'm going to right click properties and right here this will be checked by default on your drives. This will be right here and to disable indexing you would uncheck and then click apply and then OK. Then you would see a progress um, bar that would be saying that would be telling you how long it's going to take to unindex the drive. Depending on the type of drive, whether it's a hard disk drive or SSD, the time may vary. If it's an SSD of two terabytes or less, it may take 15 minutes or less. If it's a hard disk drive, it may take an hour. But the performance difference is a big deal. I do recommend disabling indexing on the drives that you do run programs from. So your, your local disk C or any drives that you have games actually running from, I do recommend disabling indexing. It makes a big difference of performance. Now the last tweak that I'm going to show you in this video is called O&O &O Shut Up 10. You can get the link in description. It's 100% free. I've actually made an entire video on O&O &O Shut Up 10 which you can watch up here. But in this video I'm just going to go over a little bit of it just for your quality of life. But this does actually enhance your, your performance and your privacy all in one app. Now this is going to allow you to disable all of your apps that are on your computer from talking out on the internet at all times, whether they need to or not. You, this may frighten you, but most of the apps on Windows machines are constantly wanting to talk out on the internet, gather information about you. It's 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 anonymous data, but they're still collecting data on everything about the machine and sending it out to the internet, and you don't have to allow this. So Right here, this app will allow you to do a ton of things. You can go in here manually, but I'll show you a real easy way to just go through this. But this also has some, some power user features, such as being able to disable feature updates um, until you want them. So for example, every six months, Windows forces a feature update, which is going to change some settings and, and the way Windows looks and feels. And they, they're often buggy as heck, and you if you don't have Windows 10 Professional and have this setting enabled, um, then oftentimes you can't defer these updates and delay them until Microsoft sorts out the bugs. So you are actually used as a guinea pig by Microsoft until they sort out things. So that actually can be done all through here in the Windows Update. It'll disable telemetry, which is Windows sending data about your usage to Microsoft, um, all of that. But if you don't want to go in here manually, you can just go up here to Actions and then apply only recommended settings. Now the only recommended settings means it's going to disable all of the stuff that's not necessary but is not going to make something not work right. So just going with the recommended here is not going to make something malfunction or not work the way you wanted it. Um, but if you go to recommended and somewhat recommended settings, that's going to go that's going to disable everything that's not necessary and then some things are not going to work perfectly right because they're not able to talk out all the time. So that one is more for power users. Um, so I only recommend the one here that says apply only recommended settings because that's going to disable all the nonsense stuff that is is annoying, that's, that everyone agrees, um, that doesn't need to be there, is, is not in your benefit and it doesn't stop anything from not functioning correctly. So that one you can do without worrying about it. Just click apply or recommended settings. It may ask you if you want to create a restore point. Go ahead and do that because if you don't like how something happens through O&O &O Shut Up 10, you can go back to that restore point. Or you can open up the app and then you can do undo all changes. This is going to put all of these settings back to factory default. You can do it all through this app and that's O&O &O Shut Up 10. And congratulations on making it to the end of the video. I hope you found this helpful. If you like it, please click like and consider subscribing. You can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram, and I will see you next time.